Hi everyone, welcome to the EV Fleet Roadmap, a Navistar podcast on your fleet's path to zero emissions. I'm Jason Morgan, your host, and today we're talking with Trish Reed, Vice President of Zero Emissions at Navistar. Trish, thanks for joining us. Oh, great to be here. So we are kicking this off with a conversation about transitioning from diesel to electric, which is a massive, massive sea change that the industry is going through right now. Um, it's easy to feel like it's this massive task from the fleet point of view, right? I mean, this is a big change, not just in my equipment, but maybe my business model, maybe how I run the equipment, right? Um, what should I expect from my partners, right? I, I'm, I wanna partner with people, I wanna choose the right partners. What should I expect in terms of support and guidance to make this a reality for me? Great question. I would start with Navistar's vision, which is to accelerate the impact of sustainable mobility. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, that is really about helping the customer through this mm -hmm. in a successful adoption of electrification, whether it's big, small, or they're not even sure where to start, right? right? right. And that's important because I like to tell people as I've been doing this for the last couple of years is we care less about selling you an electric vehicle than we do about you having a successful adoption with electrification because okay. that's really how we accelerate right. and get customers through this because we like to say, hey, it's not difficult, but it is different. Right. And you need to understand what's different in this transition to battery electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, you know, from, and when you're talking with customers, uh, what is really driving this? Do you see the need for sustainability? Is it regulation? Where do they fall in terms of, I want to do this or I have to do this? So, combination. Okay. I think first and foremost, obviously in the state of California, right. we see a lot of regulation happening, yeah. right? Then we see states looking to adopt CARB. Mm -hmm. So that's moving that way. Lastly, we have greenhouse gas phase three coming 2027, maybe a little later, right. but that's certainly going to drive change. Right. But the second thing we have to acknowledge is we do have customers that have sustainability goals or they have customers with sustainability goals. So helping customers achieve those or how do they plan to achieve those is an important step to adoption as well and what's driving some of that. And then obviously... You know, we see a lot of technology changing coming with, with battery electric vehicles. So, right. so that's positive. Right. And I like to tell customers we can debate all day long about how fast this might come, right. but it is coming. Right. The snowball has started running down the mountainside, <laughs> and when the snowball starts, we know it's all about momentum right. and it will continue to go. Right, right. So what does that look like then? So, I, so I'm a fleet, I've been a customer, I've been buying international trucks and I work with my dealer and buy a truck and it's wonderful and we run it. Uh, but does it, does this change? Does the fundamental relationship change? What's the, the plan in working with you all to roll this out? Yeah, this is so different that we've set up a dedicated team within Zero Emissions to help customers through this. Okay. And we really start with, we call it consulting, mm -hmm. but I would really say it's going in, sitting down with a customer and understanding what are their concerns right. around the transition? What are their questions around the transition? What do they think in the short term, long term? What's their motivation? Is it regulation? Is it sustainability? Is it, hey, personally, I know I just need to start learning how this is going to impact my fleet. Right. So we really start there as the first step of a three-step process. Okay. Sitting down with a customer, asking a lot of questions, yeah. understanding where they're at. This is different than what we do when we're in the ICE vehicle because we're, we're talking about selling you a vehicle, right? right? We're right. going in, we're talking about the product. This is so, so not about the product anymore. Mm -hmm. This is about everything else, the ecosystem around the product. So we start with that consulting piece. The second piece is charging and infrastructure, mm -hmm. which I will say is probably the most complex piece mm -hmm. for all of us. This is new and different for us as an OE. Mm -hmm. It's new and different for our dealers. It's new and different for our customers. Yeah. This is the fueling strategy. Right. So it's important to get that right. So right. setting down with the customers, trying to guide them in the right charging hardware decisions to make, right. but also the infrastructure. And it can be a long timeline around power needs coming into a building, we want to just do this once, so while, though the customer may not know exactly what the future looks, we really try and understand as best as we can, as best as we can what's the future look like so we can future-proof you right. for five years out, right. right? So that's super important. The last piece, the third piece, is all about what we call customer onboarding. Mm -hmm. You know, our dealers have delivered a lot of ICE vehicles. Mm -hmm. Our customers have taken delivery of a lot of those vehicles. Right. 
hand the keys over and say, thank you very much for your business. Yeah. Call us if you need us, right? <laughs> right, right. Now the customer onboarding stop starts when the vehicle goes on order. Right. Is the charging and infrastructure coming into place? Right. The training at the customer, not just the technician, but driver training. When was the last time we had to teach drivers how to drive a vehicle? Right. But that's super important. Right. So that customer onboarding is a different step for us, but we think that's one of the most important steps to follow through on our consulting, the charging and infrastructure. So when the vehicle arrives, the customer can run it, operate it, and, and just weave it right into their operations with minimal disruption. Right. No, I mean, even going back to what we talk about, you know, range and expected range, right? And just like in a in an ICE vehicle, the driver and the way they operate the vehicle can impact the range there. It's different. There's regenerative braking. There's other systems in there you need to be aware of. And Definitely. And that's one of the things we've also instituted is a follow-up with a customer. So when we can get that connected data and we know how the driver is driving it, a lot of times drivers are hesitant to go in the third stage of regenerative driving. Right. But some of the assumptions the customer made might have made that assumption that that's how the driver was behaving. So right. to go into there and understand, hey, we expected you to get this range. You are, you are exceeding it, or you're coming under it. Right. Why? Because right. we want to make sure, hey, if they're coming above it, let's understand why. If they're coming below it, let's help them get to that expected range. Right. And everything I've heard, there is a definite learning curve, but drivers take to it pretty quickly. But that training and understanding, that yeah, it's, just, it's different. It's new. Um, that's an interesting takeaway, too, because you're having a lot of conversations. You're in the field working with a lot of these customers. Uh, what other lessons have you learned in these early days of, of rolling out the product and getting infrastructure on the ground and helping people through this transition? What have you learned? Yeah. So we are learning all the time. And that process, again, it's, it's different in this space than the ICE. Good news for us is we have been building and delivering school buses for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. So we did that. We launched a medium-duty product. So we're not talking theory now. Right. We are delivering vehicles, and every experience we have, we learn from it. So what have we learned the most is the importance of the charging and infrastructure and making sure that's getting in place mm -hmm. uh, prior to the vehicle delivery. Right. The customer onboarding, how important that is. Right. And then helping customers just understand that this is doable, yeah. right? I think customers immediately sometimes find all the reasons why they can't. It's finding the reasons they can. And we can do that with telematics information and helping a customer understand by specific vents. Okay. What's fits in the range that oh, the see. battery electric vehicle can serve you. I see. And then we bring in variables like ambient temperature and right. those other things, but helping the customer kind of knock down what they yeah. are the perceived barriers right. to entry on this. But I think also the charging infrastructure, and I would say with that, portable charging. Mm -hmm. And what do we mean by portable mm -hmm. charging? A couple of things is one, hey, don't maybe make a rush decision on putting chargers in cement right now because the flow of your operation may change and you'll want to learn and evolve as that goes. Right. So portable charging options, also portable charging options if there's a delay getting enough power into the building. Oh, so that has been a key learning and bringing to the market services and solutions that help our customers with portable charging. Yeah, it can kind of ease into it too. Because, you know, like you pointed out, like change. I mean, how many people will go, yeah, we love change. Let's change right now. Yes. I mean, it's hard to do, right? I mean, that's why we have change management and all these other things. But yeah, making it approachable, uh, right? Not because it can seem overwhelming. Are there any myths uh, that we can bust right now? Anything, any preconce preconceived notions that you run into the customers of like, ah, it's going to be this or it's going to be that, that, that you've seen isn't true? I think first and foremost, uh, I think a lot of our customers think, hey, if an administration change or something changes, sure. this is all going to stop and go away. Right. To my previous point, this is not going away. This is happening. Speed might vary, mm -hmm. but this is happening. So definitely, you know, don't, don't stick your head in the sand and pretend this is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Start now. Mm -hmm. The learning curve, the infrastructure, all this takes time. Right. So the other thing was what we'd say is don't don't put it off. You got you have to start now. And thirdly is you know the range we talked about that that's a barrier to entry. We can help customers understand that and get through that and knock down that barrier. Right. So the good news is we're doing this. 
We've understood a lot of the barriers to entry. We can help customers through that. And again, if you want to start small, you want to go big, or you're not even sure where to start, our process can yeah. navigate you through that. Well, I kind of wanted a little more on that. because, Like what degree of starting now is starting, right? To get back to your earlier point, in today's world when we buy an ice truck, that means I'm probably talking to a dealer about product and we're probably talking dollars and cents and equipment and build spots and all that stuff. So, but what does start now look like in the EV world? Like, is it just a conversation? Do I need to know anything or can I just like pick up the phone and call? What does start now mean? Yeah. Great question. That is exactly right. Let's just start now with a conversation. Okay. Let's sit down, let's talk about what your concerns are, why you maybe don't believe that this can work or why you're motivated to try to make it work. Right. Let's start there. The telematics information that we can get, whether we already have it or we can get it from you, yeah. is really, really helpful to start that process to understand what VINs are electrifiable, how might the charging strategy work. So we just start with discussions. And I think at Navistar, the other great thing we have is a lot of engagement from a lot of functions, our service solutions group mm -hmm. with warranty. Navistar Financial. Mm -hmm. So really being able to package a holistic solution for our customers that addresses their concerns. But the first part is just start the conversation. Let's start talking about what this can look like year one through at least year five. Okay, yeah. I mean, you even go back to some of the things of, of how it's different for it's different for you all, it's different for the fleets, it's different for everyone. It's also different for utilities, right, who are now a new player in this and that uh, relationship can vary, right? And, and I need a partner that also has a rela relationship that might be able to get me to pull through that and get some projects moving and some interest there. Great point, again, because our partnerships with charging partners and then also Quanta okay. is significant. And Quanta has a significant utility relationships. They're experts in helping uh, design and construct oh. and even commission chargers, oh. right? Okay. So. Having a partner like that that has that know-how, knows how to work with utilities, has been proven to be very beneficial for us and the customers. And again, the infrastructure is, again, one of the most complex pieces for our customers to, to get through. So Quanta being a partner to us has been significant. And again, can't emphasize the starting now. I'd also go back to one of your other questions about, you know, one, one of the things to debunk from a myth yeah, is, right. hey, the grid can't handle yes, this, right. right? Yes, exactly. Can't do it. You, you know, again, with Quanta and our utility partners, they would tell you the grid can manage it. Uh -huh. Now, where the power is and where that grid can feed power is the biggest question because that takes substations and transformers. Right. So finding the right location I see. is and super critical and then start the power coming into that building in case there's not enough power in the substation or transformer. Right, and so that's Quanta's world, right? Because that's a new name to me and that's someone that you're partnered with so that when I work with you all, we have that backing then too to help get this in the ground and get this going. Okay, because I feel like that is a big, we start talking about this world that, hey, we're used to rolling in the diesel pump and filling it up, right? Now that's this, so we have new equipment, yes, too, but we have different partners, different different energy sources, right? I want to be able to leverage those relationships. Right. Yeah, And that's probably a little bit different for Navistar, right? We've been able to do this on our own with our dealers and helping our customers. Now it, it really takes a, a much bigger approach to help our customers with a, a lot of different partners we never probably thought we'd be working with, right. like the charging hardware, right. the Quantas, even different elements of energy providers when you think about microgrids and other things that be, could be coming to help our customers manage energy in the future. Right, right. Yeah, because you have infrastructure at, at some dealers now, I believe, too, right? And you've yes. put actual infrastructure in the ground. So you've been through uh, that process. You've, you've uh, walked the talk, uh, so to speak, there and kind of understand that. Okay, so you're telling me, okay, range. So you brought up range. So you're telling me that range anxiety shouldn't be a thing because this is, right, this is what people talk to. Does it have enough range? Will I have enough range? Can I get there? Should this not be a, a concern? It should not be a concern definitely with certain applications. Okay. The range works today, right? Okay. Technology is improving. It's getting better. We have fits for range, right, with, for, for vehicles. Right. Granted, hey, there's some applications, long haul, hey, there's public infrastructure that needs to happen, yeah. but we'll ours, we are also helping customers work through that with understanding where could we do different charging at depots and helping them break up a route and helping them find a way uh, to make those longer ranges work. Now, that might be a small shift in operations, so I think there's two options for customers. Yeah. 
right? Once we understand how your vehicles are running today, there are vehicles that would just plug and play right. uh, in battery electric, and then there's some that might need a change in your operations and how you do things if you're really wanting to move more of your fleet to electric vehicles. Right, okay, and then, because going back to it too, because I know we're dancing around here, but I do want to make sure that's that telematics component. So I can give you kind of the, this is where my vehicles, I can anonymize it, right? So, you know, here are my vehicles, here are my routes. You can kind of give me a percentage by that vehicle, right? When you were saying the VIN specific. So it's like this part of your fleet fits operation today. Yeah, perfectly, perfect description. We oh, can do it VIN specific, but we can also look at the trips and say some trips could be electrifiable oh, if you make modest adjustments to your operation. Okay. So it's twofold. Okay, interesting. Well, you know, and uh, going, now going to the, the, the operations, right? I, fleets hone their operation. They sharpen their operations, right? They're, they're working on very thin margins. So what about, what about this? Can you bust this myth? Too expensive, too complicated. I don't know how to even do this, how I'm going to pay for this. Uh, what, what do you say to a customer that's dealing with that? Right. Great, great question. We get that a lot from customers. <laughs> Uh, so first and foremost is we've got a team that works with customers to try to find grants and incentives that are out there. If we find those vehicles that are electrifiable, how do we stack grants? It could be federal, it could be state, it could right. be local. How do we help those customers find those grants, apply for them, and help them fund for the equipment? I think the second piece of this, obviously, technology is going to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. And over time, there will be improvements. And, and if you think about electrifying, vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot less moving parts in an electric vehicle. Right. I, also, I also like to think, hey, EV is a catalyst of change. Right. So customers who would normally turn their fleet every three to five years yep. because of maintenance, this is going to look a lot different with electric vehicles. Right. The other thing to consider is fuel cost. Fuel costs can be very variable, right? Mm -hmm. Now with energy, energy cost, we tend to know what that is, especially when you power right. your vehicles to charge them and help customers manage that. And that could take some variability out too. So, you know, we can always look at that and find all the reasons not to, but there's a lot of positives and a lot of opportunities with electrification to help customers make TCO make sense yeah. as we progress down this timeline. Yeah, just wrapping your head around it and just, you know, working with the right people to get there. That sounds great. Uh, we are into the first couple weeks here of the new year. We're in 2024. A uh, lot coming down the line. What should we expect? What's, what's new? What can we look forward to this year in terms of zero emissions? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, the product roadmap that we have mm. that we are excited to share new news, big news okay. at ACT in right. May of 2024. So we would encourage customers to stop by our booth yep. uh, when we're all together in May of 2024. That'll be exciting. And then I think also we'll have more and more news to talk about how we're helping customers in this journey uh, because, again, we are doing it. And we're learning every day, and that makes us better at helping our customers make the transition to electrification. Right, right. Well, great. Well, I can't wait to hear that news. But for, I don't, uh, in, your, in your terms, start now, right? I want to start now. What's the best way to get started with you? Start now is reach out to your dealer or reach out to your local salesperson, if you know that person that works for Navistar and they will connect you with our team in zero emissions. Perfect. Trish, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Had a great time. Same here. Thank you. And thank you for watching the EV Fleet Roadmap, a Navistar podcast about your fleet's path towards zero emissions. I'm Jason Morgan, and we'll see you next time.